Early ball in, seeking out and finding Jonathan Glynn. And Glynn in on goal, and Glynn, it's in! What a start for Galway in the third minute. Jonathan Glynn with the goal. Hesitation from the umpires, but the goal is given. Bad news for Galway during the week. After it was confirmed that Niall Healy will be out for the year with a cruciate injury. Here's one of four chaps. You have debutants for Galway this afternoon. Torek Brahani, and that's a superb score. 1-3 to no score. Well, Leash need to get a foothold in this game. This is Brian Stapleton from halfway. Optimistic, but he has the distance. Has he got the accuracy? He has. And Leash have their opening point of the afternoon. Here's Joe Fitzpatrick. Well, Leash have the aid of that strong breeze in the first half, and that one is carried in and over the bar, but it's a brilliant strike from Joe Fitzpatrick. And Leash gathering momentum. Tidied up by Brian Campion. Joe Fitzpatrick has already registered one terrific long-distance score, and that's another one. Well, that is absolutely outstanding from Joe Fitzpatrick. Leash absolutely motoring it right now. Here's Jimmy Walsh having a crack from some way out. And Leash in front for the first time in the game. Worrying times for Anthony Cunningham. And Leash in action for the fifth consecutive Sunday. We do wonder if fatigue may take its toll. This is Charlie Dwyer from Balnakill. And that's an exquisite score for Leash. Tremendous from Charlie Dwyer. Connor Cooney for Galway. Already scored two points in this game. And has he got a third? He has. Excellent from Conor Cooney. 14 points to 1-6. Tommy Fitzgerald laying it off on the big hit coming from Jimmy Walsh. Here's a chance perhaps of a goal for Neil Foyle. Bearing down on goal. Close down. He, well, flashes his effort just wide. Big goal chance for Leash. For Neil Foyle driving at the Galway defence. Galway had numbers back in the end. It goes wide. Anthony Cunningham will be looking for a big second-half performance from his side. Glynn breaking it down for Joe Canning, who's been very subdued in this game so far. Well, now he's got his first point of the afternoon. Tommy Fitzgerald battling with Irla Tanyan. The ball squirts out of play for a sideline ball for Leash to be taken by Charlie Dwyer. And he's having a real good go at it. Oh, that's an excellent point from Charlie Dwyer. Ball runs loose and Brian Stapleton is on to it. All a bit untidy at the moment in the sunshine at O'Moore Park in Port Leisha. And here's the new man in and he lands his score. Brilliant point from Jason Flynn. David Collins having a go from deep inside his own half well he has the breeze behind him and that is a top-notch score and that will thrill Anthony Cunningham well it's been a much improved second half display from Galway they still have some work to do this is Niall Burke from a very difficult angle and Burke has the radar switched on Leash cleared their lines Stephen Picky Marr unable to gather it in and this is Paul Killeen on in the second half on his championship bow, and he's doing so in some style. Stoppage time is almost up. Leash trailing by two points. They need a goal at this late stage. This is John Purcell. Can they conjure up something late on here? Late, late drama. Willie Highland goes down, and the referee has awarded a free in. Deep, deep in stoppage time at Amour Park. The situation stands. Leash trailing by two points. Galway 122, Leash 23 points. And Owen Riley has to go for goal here. And Galway have sufficient bodies back to block it away. And there's a right old scramble in there. And will Galway survive? Joe Canning comes away with it. And Galway just about clinging on at Amour Park. And the full time whistle sounds. And Galway have managed to hold on here. They have squeezed through. It's utter desolation for Leash. Galway managing to hang on in the end. They are through to a meeting with either Kilkenny or Offaly on the 22nd of June.
It has finished. Galway 122, Leash 23 points. We're all just devastated about it, really. Um, you know, we give it, you know, give it everything, really, give it our heart and soul today. Simply cannot fault the players. I think to, to just, you know, give everything, to lift everything they had out in that field. Um, I think maybe in the second half, you know, I think Galway probably there was just their technical ability got a couple of points from there, and and uh, you know maybe we might spill an old score to ourselves. But look, there was nothing in it. It was an absolute cracking game of hurling. Great to be involved in it. Um, but having said that, you know, listen, we're devastated over it. I suppose we have to give credit to Leash. I mean, they they were really championship hot there today, and uh, everything they hit went over the bar. And we were in a huge battle there, but we showed great character there in the second half. With, uh, that would be the big positive from us, but uh, you know we'd have a lot of aspects that we wouldn't be happy with either, and to be honest. Um, but look at Leash, are a really common team, really, and I suppose the hurling public have to acknowledge that. I thought our lads just fought tooth and nail for every every ball they could find, and uh, you know I simply kind of commend them enough. I think I was speaking to somebody earlier on. I think we were maybe down seven or eight players from the team that played here last year, and a lot of those were very experienced players. I think we were thrown in three or four minors today, and. And uh, look, they were just they were just brilliant. They really, really went for the game, and not alone just the young lads, but the, the senior lads in the team as well to give it a you know to give it an almighty effort. Chair Lachlan, <coughs> at the end of September, when we're reviewing the hurling year, you know people might forget today, but Cheddar Plunkett and, and those Leash lads, they, they've really made a mark, haven't they? Well, they have because this time last year they did the very same thing to Galway. So Galway must feel as kind of a groundhog day today <laughs> because. You know, uh, Leash used sim very similar tactics today to what they used last year, you know, withdrawing two of their half-hour line back into the backs. And I thought their crowding in the first half and their tackling and their work rate and their support play was absolutely outstanding. And three of their defenders, Brian Stapleton, Joe Fitzpatrick and Tom Delaney, got brilliant points yeah. at the start. And you know, worse for Galway today was they got a great start. You know, last year, Leash yeah. uh, got, didn't get, started, get a good yeah, start. Yeah, they started, started well. But Galway were one three to no score up early on in the game and it looked as if they would walk away. And you, to think that Leash have played four Sundays in a row, the they're under 21s, who compromised a lot last yeah. he played last Wednesday against Dublin. Mm. And Cheddar there comes out at the end and he doesn't blame any of that. You mm. know, he just says how disappointed they are. They had minors in there under the ones. So it just shows, you know, a manager that is making the very best use of the talent available mm. to him. And you can't ask for more than that. Mm. But for yeah. Galway, you know, big question marks. Yeah, there are question marks. I mean, is it possible that's a blip and they can get on with it, or does is it greater than that? Um, they've had a few blips though already this year, there's you know, so I mean we could go and talk about <laughs> Galway on night and we're doing it for ten we're years. We're doing it for ten years and stuff like that. I mean, Galway realized. had to have to sort it out themselves. Nobody else is going to sort it for Galway only themselves, right? I think it's it, tonight was about leashing their performance. To be honest with you, right? I mean, they have that. that Look at where they were two years ago. Look at the hammerings they were getting. It's they're not there yet. They're still a long way off, but they are making steady progress, and they should be supported in every way going forward from a hurling perspective. Yeah. All right then. Well, let's then move on and check on today's other game at Port Leisha. It saw Antrim taking on Wexford. Let's see how that one went. Antrim make just one change from their victory over Leash. Michael Bradley comes in at cornerback with one of last year's under-21s, Kieran Johnson, now at midfield, and Simon McCrory drops to the bench. Bradley is one of four starters who are playing knockout hurling for the first time today. Cornerback Liam Ryan is the only championship newcomer on the Wexford team. There are eight survivors from last year's qualifier loss to Clare. Dermot O'Keefe and Liam Old McGovern return to the team, having missed last year's championship. Wexford will play with the aid of a considerable breeze in the first half. Antrim have never beaten Wexford in championship hurling. They've had a couple of wins over them in the league. A good take by Keith Rossiter, the very experienced Keith Rossiter. Launching that forward and there's possibilities for them here. They could be in for a goal. Rory Jacob, open goal. Chris O'Connell, the goalkeeper, could do nothing about it. And Rory Jacob in. It's the ideal start for Wexford. A goal in the second minute. Rory Jacob, the calmest man in O'Moore Park, rounded goalkeeper Chris O'Connell. And Wexford off to a flyer, leading by a goal to no score. Tighter marking from Antrim's Neil McCauley, Paul Shields. And now Neil McMahon is the captain. They could do with a score just to settle down. Dermot O'Keefe taken out of the game. Now it's Connor Johnson. Johnson should really score and does. And Antrim open their account in the fourth minute. Nice score from Connor Johnson. Oh, here.
from Wexford again. Liam Old McGovern back in the team. They could be in for another goal. And a wonderful save, but it's buried into the back of the net by Rory Jacob. What a start this has been. And this is from Wexford. They've two goals inside the first four minutes. Liam Ogue McGovern brought a brilliant save out of Chris O'Connell, but Rory Jacob was following up after it and buried it into the back of the net. Here's Paul Shields spinning away from the cover and away from Kieran Kenny. Great ball out to Neil McManus. And now Antrim looking to get that little bit closer to the Wexford post, and that one has been fired over. Really tidy score. It's Connor McCann who put it over. Todd Doran. There's a block in on that, and again, the Antrim full back line looking a little bit exposed, and the pressure paid off because Wexford have a free in. They scored five goals in a recent challenge against Tipperary. They had two inside the first four minutes here. And here is Jack Guiney, and he's absolutely blasted that, and they're in after it again. And it's Connor McDonald. Connor McDonald with Wexford's third goal. Goals win games, and it's put them in a great position at a very early stage of the first half. Paul Shields. Now the Wexford pressing. Well, Starts in their full forward line, but now it's Neil McManus, the Antrim captain. They are desperate for a score, and that is a very fine one from Neil McManus. It's their first in 11 minutes. Mark Fanning, a low puck out that time, up towards Liam Og McGovern. Connor McCann, a little bit of space in front of him, and help from Kieran Clark to his left. Neil McManus to his right. McManus spots a bit of a gap. Liam Og McGovern working hard to come back at it, and McManus has put that one over. Two in a row for the Antrim captain, Neil McManus. But here come Wexford. Great catch from Rory Jacob, and Jacob gets the snapshot away. It's a simple game when you can do that. And Rory Jacob, wonderful catch as the ball was fired into him, caught it in his right hand, then switched, and firing it over on his left side. Owen Campbell, Campbell's effort blocked down. It was a good, strong right hand from Paul Morris, and here comes Liam Ryan. Last year's minor captain, his championship debut, and Ryan has fired that over. That's a great point. Paul Shields, lovely layoff to Neil McManus. McManus has Dermot O'Keefe in tow, and still he's going. Now it's out to PJ O'Connell. It opened up for PJ O'Connell. Had to take it on first time, couldn't catch it. A goal on his mind, but O'Connell put it over. It's still a point for Antrim. Connor Carson. Massive physical presence in the Antrim half forward line. They haven't been able to get him enough ball, though. Here's Connor McCann. Dangerous runner McCann, and he rode the challenges, young Connor McCann, and that's a fine score. Liam Oak McGovern improvising as he had to. Here's Paul Morris. Dermot O'Keefe is there now. Rory Jacob. Jacob putting that into Connor McDonald. He's caught it again. Goal scoring chance. Brilliant goal from Connor McDonald. It's his second. He has been superb all afternoon. Paul Shields. Lee Chin deceived by the flick from Shields. Racing onto it now is Darren Hamill. And Hamill got his shot away. He's only on the field about a minute. And that's a, a decent score. They're first in six minutes. Back line are in bother again. Liam Old McGovern, it's another goal. Liam Old McGovern again, the Antrim full back line just cut asunder. And Antrim, where the underdogs coming here, and Keith Rossiter has been caught, and some afters as well. And the referee does want a word with Owen Campbell. Keith Rossiter is OK, which is the main thing, but uh, what sort of action will the referee take against Owen Campbell? And the referee has sent off Owen Campbell, and Antrim are down to 14 players. Paul Morris. 
If you're picking a man of the match, he'd be fairly close to it. Now it's Ian Byrne. It's just too easy, far too easy for Wexford. And there is the whistle for the end. Wexford will meet Dublin in the Leinster semi-final. They ran them very close last year, but this was an impressive Wexford performance. Wexford winning by 5.19 to 21 points. Start you made out there today. That was everything, wasn't it? Three goals in the first 11, 12 minutes. It was powerful. Yeah, well, look at goals. They say goals in matches, and you know we scored three of them. You know I was disappointed we didn't score another one or two maybe in the first half as well. But you know, look at Antrim are in a no-win situation. Really, it's you know they've five games on the trot there in the round robin, and it's tough going on them. But we had a job to do, and I'm pleased with that performance. Once we were behind that last 20 minutes, the bodies, you know, the last four or five weeks, it was just going to be impossible. Um, it's just such a ridiculous situation like that. You, you win around Robin Group and your prize is to play a quarter final the following week. Uh, just we, the only thing that said uh, we needed to be ahead and maybe get a bit of momentum, and that might have just probably would have kept the bodies going that surge of energy from from winning ahead and going. But no, we we just weren't able for them physically. You know where those goals came from as much as the actual goals themselves. All right, so there you see now that Dublin and Wexford through to one semi-final and uh, Galway await the winners of Kilkenny and Offaly from next weekend. Those comments by Kevin Ryan there at the end, Tomás, are you sympathetic to Antrim? Oh, absolutely, well, without a doubt, uh, Des. I mean, you could say similar to about Leash today as well, right? I mean, you see, you, you saw in the last maybe 15 minutes the fault that the legs got tired as well, you know? So there seems to be one rule for the elite and one rule for the minnows. I mean, a couple of years back, I think you had that problem in the football side with the football qualifiers, guy who's out again yes, a week. Th yeah. You know, you had Cork and Waterford uh, the last day, drawn match, and then they get two weeks for a replay. Maybe extra time should have been played in the first day with the Cork and Waterford match. Um, so there seems to be one rule, and yes, I think it's something the G will have to look at. For Wexford, as Liam Dunn said, they did what they had to do. It was he accepted it was tough on Antrim. Yeah, it is. But, you know, there's a feeling that Wexford are a team on the up, you know, on the Liam Dunn, that mm -hmm. they are making steady progress from year to year. Last year, you know, they were unlucky enough. Very unlucky. Yeah. Very unlucky yeah. against yeah. Dublin yeah. and against Clare, you know, you had yeah, to go to extra time. time, you know, before Clare won yeah. the game. Now, this year will be a big year for them, you know. They have to make a bit of progress this year. There are good signs, like they scored five goals today. That full forward line looks really, really good. Now, we They're in Wexford Park as well, Jerry. Uh, it's in, the it's in Wexford yeah. Park, yeah, you know, back again. So that'll be a very nervous game for, for the Dubs going down there. That full forward I know Conor McDonald, the full forward, looks like a real fine, you know, under 21 last year. Very strong player, a bit like Tony Dorn style. Mm -hmm. They always produce players like that have that big, strong physique and are good finishers. And he's a, good, he's, he's a very good finisher. Very, everyone, very impressed by Liam Ryan, the cornerback. I think he's an, he was an A minor yeah. last year. Yeah. Uh, you know, they have Diamond O'Keefe at, at midfield. So he's mixing the experience with the with young. The end, yeah. You know, he's doing absolutely everything right. He's got their fitness up, level up very, very high. And their combination play has really, really improved. You know, yeah. they're not hitting and Hurlers, they're playing in the same style as all the top there, teams there, are playing. There's a bit like the old art, the ballard about yeah. them, right? The way the style and they played and mm. stuff like that, the sharp ball and yeah, you know, yeah. the movement.